Hello everyone, and welcome back to the garage with Bonesaw. This time around we're going to be looking at the British Tier 5 heavy tank, the Churchill Mark 1. Now, I'm going to be straight up with this review. I'm not going to be pulling any punches. The Churchill 1 is a trap. It's an absolute trap of a tank. Um, you expect one thing from the listed stats, but you really get another. It's, it is much better than people give it credit for, but from what you see on paper versus what you actually get on the battlefield, things are completely different. And that lies in the armor of this tank. And this is where I'm really going to start from this review. The Churchill Mark I has a listed armor of 177 millimeters on the front. I'll put it out there, that is true for one section of the hull. This section, the lower plate, the one bit of the tank virtually no one shoots at. Everything else here, the upper, what, what you could essentially call the upper glasses, um, and this frontal hull section with the driver's hatch, um, the machine gun port over here, and the three inch howitzer, which is for decoration only, it cannot be used, um, is all much, much, much lower in armour. It's barely even um, close to 177 millimetres. Um, enemies can very easily penetrate that armour, um, and so it often means that you you get lulled into a sense of security. You look at your tank and you think to yourself, wow, I've got 177 millimeters of armor. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a KV-1 um, because his 85 millimeter gun has insufficient penetration to penetrate me. Um, I'm pretty sure the 76 millimeter gun, no, sorry, the 85 millimeter gun on the KV only has about 150 millimeters of penetration. I can just check that now. Alrighty, Soviet Russia, KV-1. Let's look. Um, 85mm F30. 120mm of penetration. Right? So, I mean, theoretically, you should be able to sit there and just patently bounce shots from your hull from that gun. I'll tell you now, you'll have to angle yourself to get it. It, it will not happen unless you angle this tank. Um, taking shots in the hull mostly will penetrate. It is very rare to bounce shots from this tank um, unless you're facing a gun that has very bad penetration, like one of the early British 75mm guns, or um, the German 5cm uh, L60, anything like that. Um, most tanks that you will encounter at your tier, things like Panzer IV, Panzer III on four with the L48 gun, um, Sherman's with the 76mm gun, 75mm... Oh, the, the American 75mm on the Sherman might struggle a little bit, but the 76mm gun... Um, any of any of those weapons you encounter, they will more than easily penetrate your frontal hull, so you really need to angle yourself, and you need to angle yourself sharply. Um, really want to get it, um, a really tight angle, because you want your tracks to try and block off a lot of that damage, um, because th this section of weak points here really is, is incredibly weak, um, and you will take substantial damage from that. Um, another important factor in the Churchill Mark I is its turret. Its turret is the weakest point of the tank. You start off with the Mark I turret, um, which has substantial armor. Um, it has 101 millimeters of armor, which is pretty good, um, but it does still have weak points. It has these three um, slits for the machine guns, the optics, and for the gun, which are uh, uh, very obvious weak points. Um, and on this turret, you can only really mount two guns. You can mount the two pounder, which doesn't have much penetration, it has 78 millimeters, which was great at lower tiers, not very good at tier five. You can also mount the, mount the uh, ordnance quick firing three inch howitzer. This gun is abominably useless. It is, in my opinion, the worst gun in World of Tanks. It has a 15 round per minute rate of fire, only 38 millimeters of penetration with standard ammunition, and only 175 damage um, with standard ammunition. If you use high explosive anti tank, you get 100 millimeters of penetration with 110 average damage, but even then 0.53 accuracy and a 2.1 aim time, you're not going to be hitting much very quickly. Um, the rate of fire does compensate slightly, but you don't want to be wasting, you know, heat ammunition blazing away because that's money down the drain. Um, and as you know, with high explosive ammunition, unless you penetrate, you generally speaking won't do full damage. You only do a small fraction of that damage. So generally speaking you're firing 15 rounds a minute, each one's probably going to be doing only about 20 damage per shot, so 
that's very, very low damage. Um, it is a high explosive round, so you can kind of counter enemy armor with that, but it's it's useless. You can probably get through your first kind of couple of games in this tank until you unlock the second turret, which is the uh, Mark III turret. But overall, you're just gonna it's really gonna struggle for those early games, um, and you really got to stick through it in order to get the, the Mark III turret. Now the Mark III turret does give you access to some uh, some other um, options. The problem is with the Mark III, you lose armor in upgrading. Um, and the Churchill Mark I is a little bit like that. When you upgrade to the Mark VII, you lose frontal armor. It goes down to about 152mm of armor, but you lose a lot of those weak points as well. And that's the same with the turret here. So you lose armor, you go to 88mm of frontal armor and 76mm of rear armor. Um, however, it, the upgrade in armament is well worth it. Um, you also have the issue of the fact that this turret has little to no gun depression, so you really need to be on flat surfaces when engaging the enemy. Um, the Churchill hates slopes, it hates craters, it hates anything like that. Um, flat ground is your best friend, because you are so long, even a small bump over the front or the rear can, um, can uh, ruin your angle of shot and just make your day an absolute pain. Um, so with this, this turret you get access to the 6 pounder Mark III and the 6 pounder Mark V, um, as well as the 75mm gun Mark V and the Vickers High Velocity. Now the Vickers High Velocity is really what you want. Um, it's roughly equivalent to the German L70 75mm gun, um, and it's really where you can start doing some damage because it has enough penetration to go through pretty much every tank you'll face. Um, and it's accurate enough for you to engage at a distance to counter the uh, weakness of your frontal hull armor and frontal turret armor and uh, really allows you to put some consistent damage out. You do have to be careful however as it can still bounce off things like KVs um, because KVs have their weirdly shaped hulls and turrets, the angles on those are really bad so you've got to make sure you pick your shots from a distance otherwise uh, the higher damage of the KVs 85mm gun will really start taking you apart. Um, I think it's also important to look at uh, the research tree just to have a look at what it takes to get to the uh, the Vickers high velocity. Because as you can see, you have to go through the uh, the six pounder Mark V in order to get to the um, 75 millimeter Mark V um, in order to get to the um, 75 millimeter Vickers high velocity. Now there is an upside to this gun, the 75 millimeter Mark V. It's it's really crap in terms of penetration um, and in terms of damage. It has average penetration of 91 but generally speaking you'll get much lower than that. It's the same gun on the Excelsior. The Excelsior is terrible um, in terms of firepower and even then its armor is pretty crap as well. Um, and your damage is quite low. Your accuracy is... here. It, the accuracy is listed as being variable here. Um, that's based on what tank it's mounted in. I believe you head towards more .39 in the Churchill um, as well as with the higher aim time. Um, and the higher rate of fire, but it 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 really um, varies on the tank you've got it in. The important thing to look at though is that you get this gun on the Valentine. Now a lot of people go through the Matilda to get to the Valent to get to the uh, the Churchill these days. They ignore the Valentine because the Valentine's a bit a bit crap, um, and that's true. The Valentine is a bit crap, but the upside of the Valentine is if you look at the Valentine, it lets you research the 75 mm gun before you get to the uh, the Churchill. And once you've got that 75mm gun, um, you can very easily um, move straight to the Vickers High Velocity. Um, you will still have to research the 6 pounder Mark V, but it means you don't really have to use the 6 pounder Mark V. You can research it and just go straight to the 75mm. Uh, the um, actually, I don't believe you even need to. Um, oh, well, you need to research it in, in order to get to the, the 75 high velocity, I believe. Um, but um, realistically, you, you don't need this gun, you can just skip it. Um, and once um, you've ground through this for a couple of games and you've got the um, high velocity, you're well equipped to engage um, enemies. Now, as I said, the Churchill is better than it sounds. I am kind of making it out to be a bit doom and gloom at the moment. You do have a couple of upsides, you have two gunners, um, this means your accuracy is not quite as uh, devastated when you lose a gunner, um, so you can kind of carry on that way. 
and it can be quite durable when you angle yourself against, especially against lower tier tanks, um, tier 4, tier 3, you are very, very durable, um, and you can easily form a very solid centre for the battle line of your team. Um, against higher tier tanks you will struggle, and against tanks of the same tier you can do uh, quite well, it's just enemy heavies like the BDRG-1B, um, the KV-1, these are things you're going to really need to be conscious of, and just deal with them appropriately. Um, be a bit cautious, don't go charging straight in. In terms of upgrades, um, medium caliber gun rammer, not really need it. Um, you can take it if you want to, but the rate of fire is already pretty good. Binocular telescope, that one can be an okay pick. Um, you only have 350 meters of view range, um, and it means if you want to stay stationary, you kind of try to use that um, 75 millimeter high velocity in a, a sniper mode, I guess you could say it, it would um, be somewhat effective. Um, camouflage net, once again, I don't think it's absolutely necessary if you want to really get stealthy and camp it up and snipe, that might be the case, but I don't really think it's going to do you much good. Coded optics is okay, because, um, as I said, the view range on this tank is quite short, and uh, increasing it to try and get the drop on your enemies is a great, um, great benefit. Enhanced gun laying drive can be good, once again, it lets you uh, get those first shots off on your enemies, very important, and once again, you your big big hurdle that you'll have to overcome is encountering and engaging enemy heavy tanks, and you're really going to need to focus on being able to do that. Um, enhanced coil springs. This one actually can be a good pick. Um, it can be good for increasing the durability of your tracks, because you will be angling yourself a lot and using those tracks to absorb a lot of damage, um, so that can be a very useful one. Toolbox, once again, good for repairs. Improved ventilation, good if you want to really kind of bring this tank up to top standard, but I wouldn't recommend it. And now, the crucial one. The heavy spore liner. Now, you'll notice I don't have one of these mounted at the moment, and there's a reason for that. That's because I originally sold my Churchill 1, bought the Churchill 7, and installed my spore liner that I had on the Churchill 1 on my Churchill 7. But I repurchased the Churchill 1 in order to grind through it to get to the, uh, the Churchill gun carrier. Um, because I felt, well, it's the only way to get to the Churchill gun carrier, and I felt the Churchill gun carrier unlocked some stuff uh, later down in the British tank story line that I felt was uh, a good idea to unlock. And uh, generally, the Churchill 1 hasn't been that bad to me. Um, it's been an okay tank to play. It's just been um, a little bit um, of getting used to how it plays and fully learning um, how, to, how to take advantage of, of its few advantages that it does have. But uh, yeah, the spore liner, the heavy spore liner is absolutely essential to Churchill. Um, as you can see, Churchills are entirely flat angles, and their top deck armour is very, very thin. Um, and high explosive rounds, like artillery, with your 63mm of hull armour, um, and 88mm of turret armour, and just very thin, thin um, deck armour, will just ruin your day. Um, artillery is your consummate bane. Um, Shermans and Panzer IVs with a 105mm can take off half of your health with a single shot, even though you have substantial armor. Um, and 700 hit points isn't bad, it's actually pretty good for tier 5, but if high explosive just makes that melt, there's absolutely no point to having that much health. So that spore liner is really essential, it will really um, just increase the durability of your tank. Um, and the only reason I didn't really invest in one the second time around driving this tank was because I, I figured that the grind was going to be pretty short, and it wasn't particularly long. So I didn't really need the investment, but it is, it's one of those absolutely crucial ones. Um, the Churchill Mark 7 um, really benefits from it tremendously as well, and it will just save you a lot of time and frustration. Um, in terms of research, you have two options with the Churchill Mark 1. From the 6-pounder gun onwards, you can head to the Churchill Mark 7. Um, if you do go to the Churchill Mark 7, I would recommend getting the high velocity first, otherwise at tier 7, uh, sorry, tier 6 with the Churchill Mark 7, you're going to be stuck with the 6-pounder uh, Mark 5. And at tier 6, it's really not adequate anymore. Um, you really want to start out with the uh, the high velocity. You can use the 3.7-inch howitzer, but it's, it's not that great at tier 6. It's great at the low tiers, it's great on the Valentine AT, but really want to uh, have that 75mm high velocity, um, which you can use until you unlock the 77mm Mark II, which is a very, very good gun. 
much better than the high velocity. Its stats may only be marginally better, but as I mentioned in the Churchill 7 review, um, it increases your consistency dramatically. Um, back on the Churchill 1, you can also go through the tracks um, to get to the Churchill gun carrier. Now, the Churchill gun carrier is an interesting tank destroyer. It's not really necessary to go through. Um, if you look at the tech tree um, for Britain, you can see that you have uh, the AT-2, the AT-8, um, and then you can go through the Churchill gun carrier to get to the AT-7. But it takes it takes a lot of XP. It takes about 49,000 XP to get from the Churchill Mark One to the Churchill gun carrier. Um, that's generally the price you pay if you skip from a heavy tank line to a tank destroyer line or an artillery line. Um, it, it'll cost you a lot more experience to get there. Um, however, the Churchill gun carrier, the only way to get to it is from the Churchill One, and it is kind of worth the investment because when you go through the Churchill gun carrier, you can unlock um, some of these guns like the uh, 3.7 inch AT and the 32 pounder which as you can see are tier 7 and tier 8 guns um, which you'll need much later and so it means that you'll have this 32 pounder already unlocked when you get to tier 8 and the AT-15 meaning you don't have to go through the uh, the um, Mark 7 um, 17 pounder, you can just go straight to the uh, 32 pounder um, and if you really need to you can go straight to the tortoise from that um, instead of going through the um, A barrel and B barrel 20 pounders but it, it really does give a dramatic um, advantage when you get to the AT-15. Um, generally speaking, if you do grind both of those vehicles out, like I have, I do have the uh, Churchill gun carrier in my garage, as you can see, it is an absolute ugly box of a tank, but it doesn't play too badly. Um, as I said, if you, if you want to go through both it and the Churchill Mark 7, um, it will take some time but generally speaking, once you've gotten enough XP to unlock one of them, you'll have enough experience in this tank playing it and understanding its quirks to be able to um, take advantage of it and really um, get the experience for the other tank you want much, much faster. Um, it also teaches you some very important skills for the Churchill Mark VII and the Black Prince that really become valuable. Um, and as frustrating as it may be, the Churchill Mark VII really is a substantial reward um, so long as you learn those skills. I find that a lot of people who complain about the Churchill 7 and the Black Prince are generally the ones who didn't learn the lessons of the Churchill Mark 1 about angling yourself, um, about fighting on flat ground and really just making sure you don't expose your sides, um, using urban cover to kind of really lock in your flanks and make sure that no one can get around you, um, and just generally making sure you don't get circled because this tank does traverse slowly, it only has a traverse of 22, um, its turret traverse is only 34, so generally speaking, lock your flanks, angle your front, get your track to absorb some damage, um, use the spall liner to get, ensure that you don't really get pummeled by high explosive, um, and engage on your terms, and you can really um, do well in the Churchill Mark 7 and uh, Churchill Mark 1, and uh, transfer these lessons to both the Churchill Mark 7 and the Black Prince to increase your enjoyment of the British heavy line. Um, in order to get to the uh, much more enjoyable higher tier tanks such as the Conqueror, um, the Carnarvon and the uh, FV tanks at the top tiers. So here we are on Ensk in the uh, British tier 5 heavy tank, the Churchill Mark 1. Um, I'll apologise in advance again, much like the AMX M4 uh, review, there is some uh, slight rubber banding in this uh, replay footage. Once again, the fault is with the replay footage um, and it's really unavoidable. Um, so just try and bear through it. Uh, it. It's pretty bad on this one at points, but it won't affect any of the actual combat footage proper. As you can see, I'm mounting the uh, the long 75mm Vickers high-velocity gun, uh, and Fagline is using the uh, shorter 6-pounder um, Mark V. Um, the Vickers high-velocity in matching like this, tier 5 matching, is very effective. It has a good rate of fire and can penetrate almost everything you face. Uh, the only exceptions really would be things like the AT-2. So we'll just come around the corner and put a shot to this uh, T-82. Aim in for a second shot uh, to finish him off. And that's my uh, first kill of the game. Um, next target is this Somnior S-35 around the corner. So I'm going to come around and finish him off. Sorry, uh, South 40. As you can see, that crater um, tipped my tank. So the gun depression on this uh, vehicle isn't very good. But I'll finish off the South 40 with a uh, shot to the turret. 
and then uh, finish off a shot uh, to the lower plate on that heads up. Now if you look at Fagerline, you can see he's on 43% health. He took a rather substantial hit from the 105mm howitzer on that Hetzer, and the, uh, the Churchill 1 is uh, a tank that's very vulnerable to high explosive damage. Um, so I'll just track that uh, S35 there and finish him off with uh, a final shot. Um, a small liner is a very important investment on a Churchill uh, if you do expect to uh, be playing it for some time um, if you're grinding through both the Churchill Mark 7 and the Churchill gun carrier. So I'll come around on this uh, AMX-38, uh, AMX sorry, bounce off the uh, muffler and then finish him off with a shot to the uh, rear plate um, for my fifth and final kill of this game. As you can see, the uh, Churchill Mark 1 with its heavy armour can be very dominant at uh, Tier 5. Um, although we didn't really encounter any uh, op uh, heavies on the uh, opposition. Um, even with the 6 pounder gun and the uh, initial 75mm gun that this tank gets, you can still uh, do out a very high um, rate of damage um, with adequate penetration. It is important to uh, try and angle yourself um, no matter what tier you're at uh, in order to maximize your armor protection and conceal the weak spots on the front of your tank um, and generally speaking you want to make sure the enemies don't get around to your flanks or to your rear because the uh, Churchill Mark 1 is very uh, heavily armored on the front with 177 millimeters of armor um, but its side armor is only uh, about I think, 80 millimeters maybe even lower the rear is about 50 millimeters um, and that can result in substantial damage you also need to be careful to conceal yourself from uh, artillery because uh, you are a large target and can take substantial damage. So I don't have a shot at this Panzer III unfortunately. Um, he's died before I managed to finish him off. And uh, I'll come around the corner and try and get a shot at these uh, remaining medium and light tanks but unfortunately they're destroyed before I have an opportunity to engage. And the uh, FCM 36 Pack 40 is down near our cap and will be destroyed shortly. So as you can see, uh, the Churchill Mark 1 can be very dominant at Tier 5. Um, you just need to take into account uh, the potential firepower of your enemies and positioning your tank correctly. So here we are on uh, Lakeville in the British Tier 5 Heavy, the Churchill Mark 1. And this time around the enemy team actually have some heavy tanks. We have a Churchill Mark 3, which is the premium version of this tank, um, on the top of their ladder followed by two KV-1s. Um, myself and a KV-1 are the only heavy tanks on our team. So I'm doing what Churchill generally does, um, heading towards the town. Urban fighting is good for this vehicle, um, really lets you secure your weaker flank armour. And heading towards the valley in, on this map is not particularly favourable to the Churchill um, due to the slopes. You don't really have the gun depression to uh, really engage effectively. Now we've spotted an ironically named T-82, the name is Tank Destroyer 24. Um, and I'm going to finish him off with a single shot, so that's him destroyed. Um, and now proceed on my way into the town. The, uh, the Churchill generally caps out at about 25 kilometers an hour in terms of speed, um, but it is one of the governed tanks in the game. Um, once it reaches at max speed, you can't really push it any faster. Um, much like uh, some of the Tiger tanks, the, the Tiger and the Tiger 2, um, the uh, Yug Tiger tank destroyer, I believe, also the uh, the Mouse and the Tog are speed limited as well. Um, they can't go any faster than their listed, listed top speed. Um, and some of the British tanks, like the Churchill Mark One and the Matilda, do share this trait. So, uh, word of advice: don't push um, a Churchill. It, you might you might try to be helpful, but it's really it's not helping. It's just slowing you down. Alrighty, so we've got a T28 in the town, and he did have his track exposed in front there near that church. I'm going to take a shot at it and hopefully hit it, but no, it doesn't seem like he's there anymore. So I'm going to move up and uh, support my team in the town. We haven't made too many contacts yet, um, but it's always important to uh, pay attention to what's going on. I've noticed we have at least one heavy over in the valley, um, but I'm not sure what it is. It's more than likely a KV, um, but I'm going to try to be uh, as cautious as possible. So as you can see, the, uh, the rubble uh, playing havoc with my gun depression again there. Didn't get the shot on the uh, T-49. So it'll come around after this uh, Panzer 1C that's hiding in the, uh, the rubble there. Um, move around through um, this wall and shoot the Panzer 1C and take a hit. Now that hit is from a KV-1. If 
I'll go to free camera and switch around, you can see he's hit me right under the turret chin. Um, and I'm kind of lucky I didn't lose my gun or anything like that. But that's where most people will shoot you. So, uh, finishing off the T-28 there, and I'll go back to hard camera. Put a shot into this uh, T-34. He's using the, uh, the long 76mm gun. And unfortunately he puts a, a, puts a shot into me, um, which does damage. And I'll show you where that one hit me. Now that has hit me on my hull front. So, as you can clearly see, 177mm of armor, I don't think so. Um, that 76mm gun, uh, the second one on the uh, T-34, does have a decent turn of penetration, but it does not have 177mm of uh, penetration. So as you can see, the hull front is uh, substantially weaker than advertised. So I'll just uh, lock back into hard camera here, trying to outflank this KV for some uh, clever play, trying to engage him from behind. Unfortunately, the mediums that were holding him up have uh, started retreating, which is a problem, because that lets him get away from me. I can't really get around the corner in time to engage him. I uh, snap off a shot, but unfortunately that misses. Now the mediums are uh, turning around again to re-engage him. Um, we have a Panzer... 4, I put not, yeah, Panzer... F I'm not actually sure what that is, Tier 5. Um, let's have a look. Goose, he's a Panzer 3 on 4. Um, so I'll start shooting this KV, and as you can see, I'm uh, aiming for the flat point of his arm with the machine gun ports and the driver's hatch, and that's really what we're going to aim for. Um, my first hit to the turret chin is uh, another good area to aim for, um, and that actually jam jammed his turret. Um, so we'll uh, finish off that KV-1, um, and um, now we have an issue. We have only one tank destroyer defending our cap, um, and a number of um, tanks headed towards it, as well as a uh, heavy tank on the enemy cap. So I decided that seeing as I have the most health and I'm arguably the most durable tank on the team, um, I'm going to turn around and head back to cap. Even though it may take me some time to get there, the uh, FCM back 40 who's covering cap uh, managed to take out the M3 Lee, and I know he has a decent amount of penetration, so he should be able to hold them off uh, while I take the time to get there. Um, and things weren't looking good at this point in time. We just lost our AT-2 to the enemy artillery. Um, but our FCM Pac-40 is doing a brilliant job at, at taking down these wounded enemies. He's already scored three kills in uh, you know, just as many seconds. Um, so at the moment I'm contemplating turning around and heading back to the enemy cap simply to be able to deal with that heavy tank that was... Uh, at the enemy cap, but he, he appears to have been uh, neutralized or to have disappeared and I noticed that we do have another medium heading for cap so I, I decided that um, no, I should re resume my original uh, plan of heading back to our uh, our, our base um, and unfortunately my dithering here did cost us um, some time um, the enemy KV-2 has, uh, KV-1 sorry, has moved around to our base um, and the FCM does manage to take him out um, and that'll leave only the Matilda as a, uh, a threat however the Matilda does have some uh, significant armor and a rather high rate of fire and unfortunately for our uh, FCM Pac-40 he doesn't manage to get a top gun and he's uh, destroyed by the enemy Matilda um, as you can see here, the Churchill really isn't a very fast tank, and uh, you'll really get to see the limitation of the lack of gun depression here, as I have to get very, very close to the uh, enemy in order to be able to shoot him. Um, and my team are, you know, going on in chat saying, come on man, just shoot him, you know, are you really not going to shoot him, what the hell are you doing? You know, it, it, the usual rage when they don't really understand the capabilities of the tank that uh, you happen to be playing. So as you can see, I can't get my gun onto Matilda. Um, I really need to get onto the flat section in order to shoot him. Um, see, my gun's just skywards. Alright, now I've got a flat position. And I'll hit him straight through the uh, side plate. Then that uh, finishes the game.